What's up, guys? Uh, I just want to take a moment before this video actually starts. I'm recording on my cell phone. Um, so the wiring video that you guys are about to see, I tried to, uh, to edit in full, but it was just over two hours. No one's going to sit over two hours to watch a video uh, of wiring. And then I said, okay, I'll split it in half, an hour each. Said it's still too long. Um, so I've decided... I'm going to do it in sections. So uh, this first video is going to be about wiring up your radiator sensors and the ECT and all that. And then uh, because they are still lengthy, um, especially with the shifter box the and everything else that comes along with it. So I'm going to pretty much be posting ev a video every day on the channel, uh, section per section per section. That way it's easier for you guys to find. And it just it's just better. Uh, it's a lot of knowledge. It's a lot of information to take in. So, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, uh, the videos. And I have I hope you've enjoyed the Automatic K-Swap series. Uh, thank you guys very much. And um, now let's continue on with the video. And see you with uh, the new one. What's up, boys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, this week... We finally get down to the nitty gritty, everything you need to know about wiring up an automatic case swap. Joined by my homie Mercer Built, the man who made all yep. this possible. So, um, as you guys saw in the last video, we took the car for its first drive. Um, there were a little bit of bugs, but all in all, it was a fantastic successful drive. The, the car pulls really, really, really good for what it is being the premium engine and whatnot, and obviously Tiptronic, but the car pulled fantastic. We did have to make some minor uh, changes. Uh, Mercer found out what was wrong with the Speedo. Uh, turned out to be a wire, I believe. Uh, fixed that, and we got rid of the block throttle body because it was sticking. And after the, the last drive when we made it back to the shop, it was sticking a lot. So the, the boys at Garage 16, said not a problem and they took care of us so we got the cast 70 mil k-tune throttle body uh we're just waiting for an iac because the iac was another part of the the issue that we were having so that will be coming in uh in a few days and should be pretty much buttoned up but this video today is all about the wiring uh kevin spent countless hours doing the wiring uh figuring out everything and then he spent more countless hours making it easy for you guys, simplifying it, uh, making his own diagrams and everything. Uh, I'm going to take pictures of that so I can put on the, the video and then I'm going to try my best to put chapters on this. So if you guys ever need to go back to uh, a wiring uh, segment, it'll be chapters on the description and everything like that and it should automatically put on the channel. It'll be my first time trying to do this so don't quote me on that yet. But yeah, um, that is where we are today. Any uh, any thoughts, bro? No, let's uh, let's start, man. Uh, we're gonna start off with um, there's categories to this uh, wiring stuff, so we'll show you guys everything that needs to be done, including all the parts that you need to uh, purchase. And you will be needing to go to a local scrapyard or if you have a part out um, readily and available, you're going to need to source out these parts. So we're going to list. I think that's where we're going to start off first is uh, listing the stuff that's necessary for this um, swap. Yep. The electrical side of stuff. So let's get at it. Guys, so before we go ahead and start with uh, all the wiring, we need to show you guys some of the stuff you need to purchase. So, we have here on the board, you need a Mishimoto Rad fan, uh, fan switch. All right, I'll show you guys where that's gonna be located. We're gonna need a 1.7 EL ECT sensor. This is the original part number, the OEM uh, part number. You can purchase that. You're gonna need a uh, four or five pin uh, relay. Some guys, sometimes you can't find the four pins, a five pin will work, but either or. Uh, relay and the plug. So when I say plug, I should have wrote down pigtail. 
So plug with wiring. And then you're gonna need a lot of wiring spools and a lot of connectors. So after you purchased all that stuff, you can start away with, uh, I mean, go ahead and start with the uh, wiring. So the first thing we're gonna start, show you guys is the uh, radiator fan switch. So the radiator fan switch, obviously here's our radiator. It's located at the bottom of the uh, radiator on the RSXs. This is what we're using. We're using an RSX radiator on this vehicle. So it's located in the bottom. We're gonna show you guys where it's uh, located. Um, before I show you guys where it's located. You're gonna need to locate a wire. And this wire on the ES1s and the EM2s, it's located here along this side of the uh, body. All right, I just wrapped it and tucked it away. It looks like this, it's a three uh, wire plug. And the wire we're gonna need is gonna be this blue with the white stripe. And that guy right there is the uh, control, uh, power control for our radiator fan um, switch. So go ahead and cut that wire. And then with that wire, depending if you're gonna leave it here, it all depends on how clean of work you're gonna do. I, I cut it from here and then I pushed it all the way back to where I needed it to go. So it all depends on how clean you guys wanna go ahead and do it. So let me just put this guy back and let me show you. So with the uh, radiator fan switch, this is where you're gonna go ahead and install it. This is the OEM location. Why we're asking to get um, a Mishimoto rad fan switch, it opens at a earlier temperature than your OEM one. If you guys wanna use an OEM one, go ahead. Uh, it's up to you, but I recommend these uh, Mishimoto ones. For the price, they're great. They open up earlier, helps the car, uh, sorry, helps the radiator fans come on earlier, keep, therefore keeping the motor uh, cool and the coolant temperatures lower. Um, that being said, you're gonna need some stuff now from the scrapyard. Now we're gonna show you guys what you need to purchase also. I mean, yeah, purchase from the scrapyard. Um, that's another list of things. You got your scrapyard parts. So you're gonna need an ECU D plug. I'll show you guys what that is afterwards. Um, a spare C101, uh, C101 plug, both sides. I'll show you guys what that is. A primary O2 sensor plug. I'll show you guys what that is also. And the radiator fan switch plug. That's what we're talking about right now. So the radiator fan switch plug, a simple plug. It looks like this simple it can be any color as long as it's two uh, wires and it looks something similar like this and it will fit on the radiator fan switch all right just like that nice and simple okay so one of the wires it's gonna be in our case these are the original um, fan switch colors so one of the wires is gonna be uh, black that's gonna be just to ground so that's what we have here. I just have it straight to chassis, grounded. And then our other wire, which is a green one, I have it wired to that wire that I showed you guys up here, the blue and the white one. That's wired to this green one. So if you follow along, if you follow that wire from up here, it's just gonna go across the uh, harness and it's gonna go into the body and then eventually it goes all the way across into the chassis uh, harness in the car, the C101 plug. So you don't need to go that far. You just literally need to go to here and then just wire it up. I should have showed you guys this earlier when I didn't have the bumper on, it would have been easier, but it's pretty straightforward. Just one of the connections goes to that blue and white wire. Blue and white wire, remember that guys, blue and white wire, all right? That's the only one that I don't have a wiring diagram for because it's pretty simple. I mean, at least for me, it's really simple. Um, so that's it for radiator fan switch. After uh, that, we are gonna move on to um, 
the 1.7 EEL ECT sensor. The reason why you have to use a 1.7 um, ECT sensor is because in this vehicle, the multiplexer, so the multiplexer is attached to the um, under dash fuse box. So that under dash fuse box has a different multiplexer reading than the RSX. So we tried this here at the shop. We put in an RSX or a regular K series uh, ECT sensor. And when we have the car running and op uh, running and at optimal uh, temperature, our cluster was showing that it was running a little bit hotter than what it really was. So the resistance or yeah, I guess the way it reads, it's gonna be a lot different than the 1.7 sensor. So once we put in the 1.7 sensor, we got the reading of the gauge to read correctly, which is just underneath half of uh, the gauge um, reading or recommendation for it to be at an optimal um, temperature or reading. All right, guys, after we've lowered the vehicle, me and Paul, we were just talking about something just now. This is all, all this information we're giving you guys is for the demobilized ECU. If you have a K Pro or a K Tuner, the option to opt out multiplexer and change those things, uh, those uh, preferences, you can do that in the um, those supporting um, management systems. So for the demobilized stuff, you have to run it this way. Actually, you don't have to. If you don't want the right reading, you don't have to, but I recommend it. I would recommend for the right reading, you go ahead and get yourself a 1.7 uh, EL ECT sensor. So the ECT sensor, we're just gonna remove this guy out of the way. The ECT sensor, whoa, is right down here. If you guys could see it. That guy right there, I don't know if they could see that. Can't see it on the whole. Right here. Right there. Right over Pass here. That's the ECT. Let me get a light. There we go. I got it. You got it? Yep. So that's the sensor right there that Kevin's talking about. Guys, they're not expensive from Honda. It's actually really cheap. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a couple of under a hundred bucks for sure. So it, it, it's fascinating though. Yeah. So if you're in America, you guys are laughing. It's even cheaper than what we pay. So yeah, we got ourselves the light. It's this sensor right here. That's our ECT. So that's the 1.7 ECT. All right, now we have the correct readings. 